here in the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama, December the 14th. Comments on one comment tonight, tax protester. And then question and answer time. Any questions are fair game. We're the folks who believe the Bible is true and God ought to get the glory for his creation. We're on Rumble and Genesis Baptist Church on YouTube and Odyssey and a bunch more on drdino.com. Old-fashioned, independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eaten Baptist Church in Lenox, Alabama, Genesis Baptist Church. You can support us to open for free. We've been able to come here seven and a half years now. Join our 777 Club. But cautious, caution, if you've been in for a while, call Sandra. Make sure it's going to the right place. Anything involving blessed spirit of promise, call Sandra, okay? Okay, let's see. DrDino.com is our website and open for free because people who support us keep us where we can keep the lights on, okay? Right there is PayPal and Genesis Baptist Church. Okay, tonight, the 14th of December, the girls are doing it well, and the guys doing an awesome job decorating this place. Where did you get the Inflatosaurus? Is that? An Inflatosaurus. Man, look at that thing. You don't see those anymore. Chris, Merry Christmas. Okay. All right. We started the Gospel of John a couple of days ago, and I got a comment on that one that just prompted me. I said, look, let's just pull out the stops on this one comment tonight. Here it is. Uh, thank you for this video. I recently listened to your seminars and was taken aback by your wit and love of the Lord. I was then troubled to find out the government imprisoned you for not paying taxes and strange accusations from women in your life. Don't know anything about you, but whether or not any of this is true in any way, I hope you're a kind of person who can pass through the narrow door. Jesus is king and all tongues will confess and all who believe and repent will be forgiven. Please keep doing good things, even if in the past you haven't. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Is that would is that be Matthews or who did that comment? Archer? Yeah, Mr. Archer. Oh, I thought it was Matthew. I put Matthew later on here. Okay. Atheists and God-haters have, uh, have run with this tax protester claim against me for 17 years now. They cannot win a debate defending their dumb evolution religion against me, and they are jealous of my popularity and my good looks and my money. Well, my, my, my popularity. So they look for something, anything, to try to make me look bad and divert attention from their own silly belief that they are related to a strawberry and a whole universe came from a dot of nothing. So they jump on this one thing, oh, he's a tax protester. Okay, first of all, two days from now, December 16th, is the anniversary of the American Patriots dumping tea in the harbor over a big tax protest. I'm thrilled they did what they did. How many of you are glad they freed the, we have a free country to grow up in? Yeah, they did the right thing. Now, for the record, I am not a tax protester, never have been. I've always said if you owe a tax, you ought to pay it, okay? I've said hundreds of times, if you owe it, pay it. Is Kent Hovind a tax protester? Forbes magazine. Whoa, Peter Riley. An accredited university invites tax protester, creationist, and felon Kent Hovind to speak. Uh, Wikipedia, Kent Hovind, a fundamental evangelist and tax protester. Let's see. Kent Hovind, the ultimate grifter of the 2021 century. Really. Kent Hovind's mugshot. Un unfortunately, Creation science is not a crime. Fortunately, tax evasion is. They accuse me of tax protesting, tax evasion, okay? Ken Hoven tax evasion case. Great series. Ken Hoven is innocent. Uh, series, you ought to watch that, okay? They accuse us of being a cult leader. Who is doing this? Let's see. Ken Hoven is a commune cult leader in Lenox, Alabama. Here we go. Prison clothes. There we go. Tribute to Ken Hoven. Are Kent Hovind's tax dollars funding teaching evolution? I'm just going to interrupt real quick because that was yours. This is yeah. from Matthew's birthday? No, that is Saturday. Wow. Thank you, ma'am. Later. Okay. Uh, there. So, what tax dollars are those, Kent? Ah, Bill Ludlow. Tax protester sues the government. Anybody wears a hat on their head like that needs to be cautious listening to him. Kent Hovind, evangelist who apparently believes he doesn't owe taxes. Well, that's not true. Kent Hovind, tax protester, tax fraud. Florida man gets his dinosaur park seized by the feds. Now reported to Kent Hovind battling the IRS for years. I, they started, I, I didn't battle them. They came after me. Okay, anyway. Let's see, a ta this guy's a tax expert. Oh, we better listen to him then. Okay, Matthew. I thought it was Matthew. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you for the question. I was wrong, Doctor. Right, it's it is Matthew. Okay. 
I think it's way past time I give a thorough answer. Since I moved to Lenox April uh, 2016, some have spread rumors that I'm a tax protester and various other bad labels, cult leader, et cetera, they put on me without knowing the entire truth. These same rumors prompted your question. It's a sad reality of living in a small community that some have nothing better to do than try to make themselves look good by tearing down what others build or do. Paul said in Acts 24, they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither can they prove the things they accuse me of. It's okay to give a defense once in a while. They were accusing Paul of all kinds of things. He said, that's it. They can't prove any of this, okay? Acts 25, when he came to Jerusalem, uh, the, when he was come, the Jews came down from Jerusalem and they laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. And he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar. Have I offended anything at all? It's okay to maintain your innocence if you're innocent, okay? Since moving to Lenox, brought nearly $3 million of revenue into this area. Uh, with all the building we've done, 25,000 plus or minus visitors we've had from all 50 states and 75 foreign countries. We have seen thousands of lives changed and nearly 270 baptized in our lake. But the rumors, gossip and slander persist, calling us a cult. My answer to your question, Matthew, and this phase of my life starts with this woman, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers. Let me explain what happened, okay? Education and career. Margaret Rogers, born in Pensacola in the U.S. Army for two years, received a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of West Florida in 1989. That's the year I did my first, that's the year I moved to Pensacola and did the debate and humiliated the professor there. And I think somebody got a burr under their saddle. Anyway, uh, let's see. July 14th, Rogers was nominated by President Bush to a seat in the U.S. State District Court for the Northern District of Florida. She became a judge in Pensacola. Hmm. Vacated by Lacey Collier. Complaints Board. Okay, complaints about politicians. Here we go. Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, fraud warning. Beware of Judge Margaret Casey Rogers. Why? It's, she's a bizarre individual who is completely unethical and biased in her rulings. Judge Rogers should be investigated and when found guilty, uh, confined to prison. This woman is completely unfit person to be a judge. She's biased against Christians and in favor of evildoers as her record shows. She is paid by taxpayers and yet is a public enemy. Beware of Judge Margaret Casey Rogers to show how in deranged she is. is claim she claimed that Kent, Pastor Kent Hovind's supposed offenses were worse than a rapist. Judge Margaret Casey Rogers sentenced Pastor to many years in prison for what doesn't even constitute a crime and yet is on record for saying it's worse than a rapist. She illegally had this removed from the court transcript. Seven U.S. citizens heard her say this and have filed affidavits. She said at my sentencing, your crime is worse than rape. We paid for the court transcript, had to wait 16 months to get it, and it had been altered. This case should be overturned. She should be investigated and probably impeached at least, okay? Anti-Christian judge presided over Kent Hovind, uh, let's see, 20. Uh, in 2006, a government SWAT team raided Kent Hovind's creation science ministry. Kent and his wife, Joe, got arrested at gunpoint. Joe was dragged out of bed and not allowed to get dressed. This violent method of arresting a suspect is usually reserved for hardcore gang-related activity. It was disproportionate and a total over-the-top display of force. She was taken to the courthouse in her nightgown. They were both thrown in prison. Joe got released from jail a few years ago, but as, as of February 2015, Kent maintains his innocence from behind bars. A SWAT team coming after a Baptist preacher and his wife. My wife, Joe, and I were honey, uh, virgins on our honeymoon, faithful for 42 years. When I got home from prison, she said, I'm divorcing you. I'm scared of the IRS. I've never divorced a woman. I've never left a woman. I've never hit a woman, never body slammed a woman. Okay? It's all baloney, but she divorced me. What do you do? You move on. Okay? Tag. Well, Margaret Casey Rogers, ever wonder why Kent's in prison? Margaret Rogers, quite an interesting character, has a reputation of issuing heavy-handed justice towards Christians. She received national attention in September 09. She tried to send two Christian school teachers to prison for several years for guess what? For praying. They were praying over their food in the cafeteria. She wanted to send them to prison for that. Hang on there. 
No prayers or religion in my town, she said, according to Washington Times. Okay, Margaret. Let's see. Uh, lawmakers back officials facing jail for prayer. Hmm. School prayer charges stir protests. Students, teachers, and local pastors are protesting over a court case involving a northern Florida school principal and athletic director who are facing criminal charges and up to six months in jail for offering a meal, a prayer time, a mealtime prayer. There have been yard signs, t-shirts, and mass student protests during graduation ceremonies this spring on behalf of Pace High School, which is a Pensacola suburb, Frank Lay, principal, and school athletic director Robert Freeman, who will go on trial September 17th at a federal district court. And guess who the judge was? <sighs> Margaret Casey Rogers, okay? Prosecution of Kent Hovind was led by Michelle Heldmeyer, U.S. Attorney John David Roy Atchison, and US, uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney. Judge Richard Kreidler committed suicide when he was caught and charged with the crime of purchasing illegal pornographic material. The following year, Michelle Heldmeyer, who one of the ones came after me, now the U.S. attorney, made national news when it was found her husband, Joseph Heldmeyer, was on the same pornographic mailing list as the judge. He was never prosecuted. Uh, attorney's actions warrant probe. Why? Because he's the husband of a U.S. attorney? Probably. Okay. A few days after Kent Hovind's trial, Assistant U.S. Attorney John David Roy Atchison was caught, arrested, and jailed for attempting to rape a five-year-old. At Kent's trial, Margaret Casey Rogers, the presiding judge, allegedly said Kent Hovind's crime is worse than rape. Here's a video by world-renowned and respected Dr. Greg Dixon, longtime friend of mine in Indianapolis Baptist Temple, attesting that the entire courtroom heard the worse-than-rape remark. Did the judge know the prosecutor was a rapist? To appeal the case, Kent paid $6,000 for a full court transcript. Right away, as soon as we, I went to jail, we paid to get the transcript. To be valid, the appeal had to be filed within 12 months. The documents were held back for 16 months, making Kent miss the deadline for appealing his own case. Four months after the deadline and too late to appeal, Kent finally received the transcript, and somebody had tampered with it, removing the judge's words, worse than rape. Eight attendees of the court have signed an affidavit stating they heard Judge Margaret Casey Rogers declare Kent Hovind's crime to be worse than rape. Whoever tampered with the official court transcript is not known, but the fact alone that it was tampered with is enough to overturn the case. And what hideous, monstrous crime does the title worse than rape? Structuring. Not murder, not genocide, no. Structuring. That's withdrawing any amount of your own money from your own bank. I'm not making this up. If you withdraw money from your bank more than twice within the last 10 years, then you're guilty of structuring. He served eight years in prison for a nonsense made up crime. To recap, assistant U.S. attorney who prosecuted Kent was a rapist. The judge allegedly said Kent was worse than a rapist. The prosecutor then found, was found guilty of rape. Then the judge's statements about rape got removed from the court transcript. All those transcripts were finally delivered to Kent four months past beyond the deadline of appeal. That's only half of it. Two juries were dismissed until the guilty verdict was made. They refused to find me guilty. She called another jury. They refused to find me guilty. Called a third jury. Finally found me guilty. It's been moved from prison 23 times in eight years. By the time I was done, they'd moved me 32 times, okay? Some say they're trying to get him killed because the more you move a prisoner, the more likely they are to share a cell with a violent inmate. Allegedly, IRS agent Scott Schneider seized over $42,000 from the Creation Ministry safe and then created a tax bill for the exact amount of money seized. He made my wife open the safe. There was $42,000 in there. We had like 30 people working in the ministry, all kinds of things, money going in and out, with legit, legitimate church expenses. He counted up the money, 42000 and something, made up a tax bill for that exact amount, and then seized the money. Then just got. Judge Rogers has a track record of handing out unjust and outrageous rulings against Bible believers. She issued a contempt order against two school teachers for praying before eating their food. Washington Times reported that over 60 congressmen stepped in to show some teachers who are facing jail time. And the judge was completely out of line, ruling against the First Amendment constitutional rights. She ought to have been dismissed as a judge at that point, but the case got settled out of court and the judge is still in office. Outrageous. The same Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, who allegedly misdirected the jury on the first trial, seems to have delayed the paperwork to stop the appeal. 
and may have ordered the tampering with court transcripts. And she's been selected to be the new judge in the upcoming trial. You can do what's called a writ of quorum nobis, okay? The writ of quorum nobis is Latin, to the court at the time of judgment. The writ of quorum nobis is intended to correct a final judgment by the same court in which it was rendered by redressing a fundamental error. So we've got some people who are in the know legally who are willing to do, they say, but home, it'll take a long time. It's going to cost about $6,000 to file a writ of quorum nobis. If you can raise the money, we'll do it for you. We love your ministry. We want to help. This can get the, whole, this can get the case overturned at the start as if it never happened. But then the judges know, oh, that opens a whole bunch of doors, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. Uh -huh. I devote my time to preaching and teaching God's word. I don't waste time on corrupt politics. But if you want to help the legal team, file, file one. Let me know, okay? A coordinated effort between the police force who summoned the SWAT team, the IRS agents who invented tax bills, the prosecutor who was a convicted felon, and the judge with a track record of issuing heavy-handed anti-Christian rulings requires Congress to investigate because unsound, unsafe, rough will continue the first in prison industrial complex. They can hold stock in private prisons for profit. Judges are incentivized to hand out longer sentences. Did you know that? A judge can own stock in the prison. So the longer they lock you up, the more money they make on their secondary investment. Huh, sounds a little off, doesn't it? While prisons are full, the companies that run those prisons will be in profit. An invested judge will take a dividend of that profit. It's a conflict of interest for a judge to profit from handing out longer sentences, and they ought to be banned from investing in prison-related stock. I agree. I didn't write this, by the way. I'm just reading what somebody else wrote about my case. An internet petition with 19,000 signatures to free Kent Hovind was removed from the internet. We know who has the petition, but he won't release it. Update. We tracked it down, and we'll update it on this website soon. A uh, link to the petition can be found here. 19,000 people signed a petition to review my case and get me out, and all of a sudden it disappears off the internet. Huh. Number one mind-blowing thing that happened to Kent Hovind is he now faces another 100 years in prison. The new trial set for February 9, 2015. The trial could be moved to March. What crime has he committed that deserves that sort of lengthy sentence? He mailed a Liz Pendens on the title of his property. The government appears to be selling off the assets and his property is still in dispute. A Liz Pendens informs the buyer that there's still a legal dispute over the house. Once again, they've made a ridiculous crime of mail fraud to unjustly have him jailed the rest of his life. The pro we were disputing the government's right to seize church ministry property for my alleged crimes. And so we filed a Liz Pendens, perfectly legal. They said that's mail fraud to use the mail to file this fraudulent document. I'm locked up in jail. How would you like me to deliver it? The anti-Christian bias, Judge Mar Margaret Casey Rogers, who said creation evangelists committed a crime worse than rape, is on notice. Detractors have called Kent Hovind a liar over claims. Judge Rogers pur purposely altered court transcripts to hide her anti-Christian bias and illegal actions. We have proof. Judge Rogers' worse than rape claim is true. I heard it. Eight other people heard it. They signed affidavits. She said it. It's not in the transcript. She should be impeached immediately. Ken Hovind should be a free man with a clean record. It seems the IRS, DOJ, and public school system do not have a problem hiring mentally unstable sexual deviants who thirst for lust. Check out the story behind the sexual deviants and pedophiles who imprisoned Pastor Hovind. It seems that neo nepotist bureaucrats enjoy appointing judges to positions of power who can't distinguish the line between justice, rape, and law. Seems like Judge Rogers has set the precedent for judges to hand out 30 days to, to rapists and 10 years to preachers who teach people that they are not an animal but a child of God. Let's see, average sentencing length. This is from the U.S. Department of Justice. I got 101 months was my prison sentence. Rapists get 96 months. Uh, robbery gets 83 months. Aggravated assault, 54 months. Burglary, 53. Drug trafficking, 51. Weapons offenses, 43. Fraud, 39. Really, what was my crime? IRS finally admits and will enforce policing churches and imprisoning what they deem as political dissidents, just like Hitler did the Gestapo in Nazi Germany. Prosecuting Kent Hovind, criminals beware, America wake up. 
Pamela C. Marsh and Tiffany Eggers silence jury and evidence. They were also involved against me. New prosecutor, Ryan Love, violent, a protected violent felon who was employed by the ATF, now prosecuting Kent Hoven. Here's a timeline of events. You can read all that some other time, okay? So what is structuring anyway? Also known as smurfing is the practice of breaking up a large financial transaction into smaller transactions to avoid scrutiny by regulators and law enforcement. So if a drug dealer has $100,000 he wants to deposit, he, if he, the bank is required to fill out a form if they go over 10,000. So the drug dealers break up their large, large amount into smaller amounts. The smaller transactions are executed in an amount below some statutory limit that normally does not require a financial institution to file a report. Hmm. Federal structuring laws are smurfing ridiculous. Most structuring cases stem from a 1970 law called the Bank Secrecy Act, which requires banks to report any deposits, withdrawals, or transfers more than $10,000. The law has since been revised several times, but generally it's intended to make it easier for the government to track tax cheats, money launders, illegal gambling operations, and other criminal enterprises. What do we mean by structuring? A person deliberately splits a large financial transaction into smaller transactions. Oh, now listen, we never had a large transaction to split up. We were withdrawing lawfully earned ministry funds once every two weeks to pay legitimate ministry expenses. There was no structuring. The jury saw that twice and refused to convict. Had to convene a third jury, didn't you? I've had several lawyers and paralegals examine my case to see if I broke any laws. If I did, I would quickly admit it. My charges fall into three categories. Here they are. Here's a summary. First, counts of false charges of failing to withhold taxes from workers. They charged me with failing from withholding taxes and also charged me with withholding it and failing to pay it over. Wh which was it? Did I not withhold it or did I withhold it and not pay it? I, my lawyer never caught that. I don't know if he was on the take or not. Alan Ritchie from Washington State. We paid him a bunch of money and did, did not do his job. You could have stopped this case a hundred times, okay? If you did not apply for the IRS to the IRS for their permission to be a withholding agent and therefore had no authority to do so. Our ministry would not have had authority to withhold. Had we wanted to, you have to apply for authority to be a withholding agent. Uh, furthermore, withholding is mandatory only on foreigners per 26 USC 1441. And you didn't have any foreigners working there. So there was no law broken. The first 12 counts are completely bogus. I did not break any law. Next 45 counts is so-called structuring, which per the un, oh, unoverturned rulings of the federal appeals case, in Renus, Re 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 there is no such thing as structuring because the so-called mandatory reporting form was never properly promulgated by the IRS in the early 70s, conformant to another congressional act called the Paperwork Reduction Act. There never was a law against structuring. Never was. The Bank Secrecy Act, let's see, banking activity form is voluntary and not mandatory. Plus, I can't tell the bank to fill out a form or not fill out a form. I can't determine what they do. There is no criminal liability attached to withdrawing or depositing less than 10,000 in any transaction. Banks today all believe it's mandatory when in fact it's voluntary. And mass delusion is self-perpetuating still today. There's one last count, interfering with an officer. This is my last charge I was charged with. According to the regulations of the statute I was charged with, I was charged with interfering with a tobacco inspection officer who appeared at the manufacturing plant, tobacco warehouse, tobacco shipping company, or tobacco retailer store, and I somehow blocked their way or refused to show them tobacco inventory, inventory logs. They took a tobacco law to come after me for interfering with an officer. I don't, I've never, well, I smoked two cigarettes when I was 12 and decided I'm not going to do that, but I, I don't sell tobacco, don't make tobacco. This is what, and some of you atheists are out there still saying I deserve to go to jail. What law did I break? Paul maintained his innocence. He didn't see in front. He said, look, show me what I did. Show me my crime. They couldn't because there wasn't one. You guys, show me my crime. <clears throat> I would t they took a tobacco law and charged me with it and convicted me. <sighs> Let's see. 
So I suppose they blocked their way or refused to show them my tobacco inventory logs. When in reality, he only asked the public on the radio to pray for him, for the agent to stop the fraud. Summary from the legal team. You did not break any laws and were fraudulently convicted. Structuring and smurfing examples. Hmm. Let's say someone has 90,000 in cash. If they want to avoid reporting requirements, there are no requirements, okay? They split this up into 10 transactions of 9,000. This is an example of structuring. Remember, structuring transactions in this way is illegal. Well, whoever, whoever wrote this article on the internet does not know the law. It is not, there's, no, there's not a, no such thing as structuring. Our ministry legal counsel advised us to keep withdrawals under 10,000 to not make them think we were doing anything illegal because that triggers a flag, oh, a drug dealer or something, I guess. I've never taken drugs, I've never tasted alcohol. It'll be 71 in a couple of days. We've had dozens of college, we had dozens of college students helping us in their off hours. We paid them cash and they did their own reporting and paid their own taxes. There never was a crime, never was. John David Roy Atchison, American assistant U.S. attorney in Florida's Northern District of Florida, was arrested September 16th. That was shortly after I went to prison. He's the U.S. attorney that put me in prison. At the Detroit Metropolitan Airport in an internet sex sting organized by the Macomb County Sheriff's Office and the FBI. He allegedly had flown to Michigan with the intent of having sex with a five-year-old girl. He was a volunteer coach for the girls' softball and basketball teams and president of a youth sports association. John Ratchet, a U.S. attorney, uh, gained notoriety. He was arrested for a suspicion of soliciting sex from a five-year-old. Born 1954, Bachelor's degree, University of Florida, law degree from Cumberland Law School. Let's see. Now, he worked as the U.S. Attorney's Office in Pensacola, working on tax and financial crime cases. He was married to and had three children with Barbara Atchison, lived in Gulf Breeze. September 16th, he was arrested at the airport. He was charged with enticement of a minor to engage in sexual activity using the Internet. Aggravated sexual abuse, traveling across state lines to have sex with someone under the age of 12. At the time of his arrest, he was carrying presents for his intended victim, a doll and a pair of earrings. After his, also in his possession was a jar of petroleum jelly. Following his arrest, he tried to kill himself via hanging with a sheet in his jail cell, September 20th. He'd been removed from the suicide watch the previous day. After assuring his lawyer and a judge, he would not harm himself. He was not injured in the suicide attempt. And another inmate reported at about 4 a.m. Then, a few days later, he succeeded. October 5th, he hung himself. That's the U.S. attorney. Came after me for bogus laws I did not break. And he knows that now. Town is shaken after prosecutor's arrest in a sex sting. New York Times. Children practice football this week at Shoreline Park in Gulf Breeze, Florida, where John David Roy Atchison coached girls softball. Hmm. Atchison brought a Dora the Explorer doll, hoop earrings, and petroleum jelly with him from Florida. Let's see. According to court records, he initiated an online chat August 29th with an undercover officer posing as a mother interested in letting men have sex with her daughter. In several conversations, he said he wanted to have oral, vaginal, and anal sex with the woman's fictitious daughter. I'm always gentle and loving, not to worry, no damage ever, no rough stuff ever, he said at one point. I've done it plenty. Atheist. That's the guy that came after me. So, Matthew, thanks for the video. I listened to your seminar, was taken aback by your wit and love for the Lord. Trouble to find the government imprisoned you for not paying taxes and strange accusations from women in your life. I'll be glad to answer that, glad, glad to answer that one also in Q&A time if you want to bring that one up. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, so, Matthew, to answer your question, I'm not a tax protester. I've been pretty bold preacher of the gospel for 50 years now in my DVD number five. My seminar series, DVD number five, in the creation seminar series is the one they wanted to shut me up about. I was exposing the evil in some of the government offices, the things they were doing. When they came with the SWAT team, they said, get every DVD number five you can find. They didn't get the master. We're still producing it, okay? So I am, I'm outspoken, aren't I? I if I believe something, I, 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 don't, I preach it, all right? Uh, I was exposing some corrupt activity and that's the DVD the SWAT team was instructed to seize. I did not break any tax or structuring law. The pedophile U.S. attorney spent five years trying to find something to imprison me. 
agent who works for the private company, the IRS, most people don't know the IRS is not part of the government. It's a private corporation, okay? They opened the ministry safe, found $42,000 of ministry money, and made a tax bill for the exact amount and seized it. Then just got. I had a judge that hates Christians who dismissed two juries that would not convict and convened a third jury who finally did. I was given a ridiculous sentence for no crime at all, and I served it all. I've maintained my innocence for 17 years now, and I will continue till I die. And God will expose all the corruption in my case. Lots of the Bible was written from prison by innocent men convicted by corrupt politicians. I wrote 37 books while I was in prison, earned two doctor's degrees, led 800 men to the Lord, held four Bible studies a day in my room, answered 8,000 letters. I kept busy. I wrote this book. Why on earth did God let this happen? Wrote a whole series, seven books. I've only got, what, two? One in print, and the rest are e-books. Somebody talk to me. Hello? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, two in print, and the rest are on uh, video. Two in print, and the rest up in uh, uh, on the Internet. Okay? History's full of stories like mine, where innocent people suffer, usually over greed in those who are in positions of power. If some people, including a few in my small town, are dumb enough to believe rumors and judge me and convict me without coming to me, to at least hear my side, that's their problem. As far as I know, my heart's right with God. I'm busy trying to please him and spread his word worldwide. You're welcome to come join me or get out of the way, because I'm going to keep going, right? When the Jews saw the multitudes, uh, they were filled with envy and spake against those things. Some people, they just like our popularity around here. Have you seen the guys who always, everything they do is an anti-Kent Hovind video. Some of the guys that used to live here or work here, that's all they spend their time on. <laughs> They're jealous. Okay. Contradicting and blaspheming. The Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the judges and the prosecutors. I just added that part. And the chief men of the city. And they raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Let's see. When Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. Acts 24. After five days, they, informed, they brought in a special orator, a guy who's good at giving speeches, to inform the governor against Paul. Uh -huh. Then the high priest and chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. Hmm. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar have I offended anything at all. Festus willing to do the Jews a pleasure. Nothing changed. Answered Paul, will you go to Jerusalem? He said, I stand at Caesar's judgment, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. Chief priests and elders and all the councils sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. You mean they would lie? This is the priests and the elders and the council? These are the legal, you know, the, the mayors and the authorities in the city? They would lie? Whoa, against Jesus. Yeah. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Chief priests and the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death. The high priest stood in the midst and asked Jesus, aren't you going to say something? Jesus never said a word. As for you, ye thought evil against me. God meant it for good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. God used it for good. God used my prison time for good. Now I got 140 acres up here in Lenox, Alabama. Yeah. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So, all you skeptics and scoffers, I did not break any laws. Sorry. Matthew, thank you for the question. So far, that's long enough on that one question. Any comments or things sent in there, brother? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was wondering if the dragon, of, that of George, that what, I don't understand the question, but it might be talking about St. George slew a dragon. Yes. Okay, I think that's probably one of the many stories of people killing dinosaurs after the flood. See, before the flood came, here it is, under all these 10,000 pounds of books here. Ah. <coughs> okay, before the flood came, the Bible says the people lived to be 900 years old. This is the flood right here. Reptiles never stopped growing. Snakes, lizards, turtles, tortoises never stop. This is the age of dinosaurs with Adam and Eve, not millions of years ago. We covered that on video number three. 
know which would have taken dinosaurs on the ark, probably babies, just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. And there's a lot of reasons for bringing babies. They're smaller, they weigh less, they eat less, they poop less, and they live longer after the flood to produce more babies, and that's why you're bringing them. I'd bring baby everything on the ark, okay? After the flood, people's lifespans were dropped off to 400, then 200, then 100, and today hardly anybody makes it to 100. But so this is the age when they were, either dinosaurs died off from climate change, they couldn't live long enough in the new climate, cover that video number six, or people were hunting them, calling them dragons. You'd be a hero if you could kill a dragon. All right, uh, any more? There you go. You're changing your DNA, the mark of the beast. Well, I don't know. How far have they come on that, changing the DNA? I suspect it's gonna be a little bitty microchip you put in your hand or in your forehead. A lot of new Bible versions say it goes on the hand or on the forehead. Throw those Bible versions away, get a King James. Let's read Revelation chapter six. The mark goes in the hand. It'll be a little injection, little needle. Park put a mark in your hand, just like you go to the store, rub stuff over the scanner, rub your credit card over the scanner. Soon, there won't be cash or credit cards. You have to have one in your hand or you can't buy or sell. It's coming like a freight train, folks. Hang in there. Okay, uh, John 14, there are 75 billion spinal arm, spiral arm galaxies in the house of God. Enough for everybody. Can we call a spiral arm galaxy a mansion? Oh, I don't know. You want to have a whole galaxy? Uh, I'll be content with whatever God gives me. I don't care. He's got it under control. Could be. There's plenty of stars. Everybody in the world, could. every person on earth could own 11 trillion stars. Those are the ones we know about. We don't even know about the ones that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. Could be more. Yeah. If there's no time in heaven, why do we need a thousand years to reign with Christ on earth? Well, the fact that there's no time on heaven doesn't mean he can't do a thousand year program here on earth. He's already doing a 6,000 year program here on earth. I think God interrupted eternity. It's hard for us to even think outside of time. You know, we've been stuck in time all of our life, you know, past, present, future. It's hard to even comprehend, no time. And before the creation, what was there? Well, you see, once upon a time, there was a time when there was no time. Mm -hmm. think, think about that one. <laughs> okay. When you confess you're a sinner and ask for mercy, does that cleanse all past and future sins? I don't know about future. Uh, when, you, when you accept Christ as your Savior, you become a child of God. From then on, your sins are treated differently. You're God's child. He may spank you. He may punish you. He can lose your rewards. He might take you to heaven early. You could, God, 1 Corinthians 6 or 5. There's a man living in adultery with his mother in the church. Read 1 Corinthians 5. Paul said, turn him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. He's still going to heaven. Going early. So as a Christian, you cannot sin and go to hell. You can sin and go to heaven early. You can lose all your rewards. You can certainly lose your joy while you're alive. I don't. I've been safe almost 55 years. I don't want to sin. I want God to be pleased with me. Everything I do, say, and think, I want him to be pleased. He's my. I talk to him all the time, my Heavenly Father. So I, I guess it becomes a different attitude. So, uh, did you know the first two humans in Norse mythology, names were Asker and Embla? Huh, I did not know that. Billy, you're Norwegian. Did you know that? Sounds good to me. Okay. Kent, why do you think saying, if you owe a tax, you should pay it, means you aren't a tax protester? Those two phrases don't go together. I could say bananas are yellow. Uh, I pay every tax I owe. I pay gasoline tax, sales tax, uh, property tax. If you owe a tax, pay it. I'm never a tax protester. What are you talking about? M make your question a little more clear, would you please? But I am not a tax protester. Okay. What do you think about the Geneva Bible? Geneva Bible is very, very, very similar to King James, okay? Matter of fact, the King James translators used all the previous Bible translations to make theirs. King James just simply paid for it. He didn't, he didn't do any of it. He himself was not a good man. But we have a whole series of books. If you want to get a King James library here, 280 bucks for all the great books and really study the topic and become King James expert. The so-called errors or mistakes in the King James is in there. The dictionary, built-in dictionary in the King James. The language of the King James Bible. This one is absolutely fabulous. In awe of thy word. And the one New Age Bible versions talks about all the problems in the other Bible versions. The NIV, that's the non-inspired version. 
But this, you get the whole series for Christmas uh, for somebody. Okay? Uh, Geneva Bible is, uh, it's, it's 95%, I don't know what percentage, it's high percentage, exactly correct. King James, I think, that's where God preserved it 100%. It's just my theory. So far, it's proven itself true to me. But Geneva Bibles is very good. Dr. Oven, think we live in a binary solar system. Uh, explain what you mean. What exactly do you want to know about that? Uh, okay, send that question back in. Okay. It's absolutely a scheme to shut you down, brother, because you made hundreds of scientists, ex supposed scientists, look stupid or dumb ideas of millions of years and fake evolution trash. Yep, that's why they didn't like me. They still don't. And some of you atheists are going to make comments for the next 20 years over this tape tonight, aren't you? Yeah, won't they? I hope so. Oh, yeah, hope so. Kent, is watched, I've watched your videos from before you went to prison and shared a lot of information they didn't want you to. Yep. The, it's the prophet's job in the Bible to just preach God's message. Whether the people want to hear it or not, you just preach the message God gives you. And so I try very hard to study this book, to understand it, and to, and to relay it on to everybody else. If people don't like it, or that's on them, not me. I, I, deliver, I did what God told me to do. I delivered the message. Okay? Last one. Last one. First 12 counts were charges of willful failure to collect, account for, and pay over federal taxes. Well, let me show them to you again here. Uh, this is exactly what they charged me with. Uh, Slide number 55, Alt D V, 5 5, enter. Counts of false charges A, failing to withhold taxes from workers. They charged me with not withholding taxes. First of all, you have to be a withholding agent to be able to do that. I was not authorized to do that, okay? Uh, and then they charged me with withholding it but not paying it. It's contradictory. Those two charges are contradictory. It's like charging you for going too fast and, the, and going too slow at the same time. So I'm sorry. Uh, I did not break any laws. Okay? Any more? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Tomorrow night is uh, making babies. You atheists haven't answered any of them. Come on, where are you? You claim you have science on your side. You have, I've given you 40, what, 47 targets to shoot at. You can't hit a thing, can you? You know why? Evolution is stupid. <laughs> stupid. Real stupid. Okay? See you tomorrow. Bye.